Sodium is an important lab value to know and to understand, okay? Normal values are 135 to 145 mil equivalents per liter, and that's a generally accepted number. That's a generally accepted value. The reason it's such an important lab value is because of the role it plays in extracellular osmolality and electrolyte balance. Okay, sodium is the most abundant cation in extracellular fluid. What are cations? Well, cations are positively charged ions. Okay, we have anions, we have cations. Sodium is the most abundant cation in extracellular fluid, and it plays a role and it aids in osmotic pressure. Renal retention and excretion of water, acid base balance, regulation of other cations and anions in the body, and also plays a role in blood pressure, pressure regulation and the stimulation of neuromuscular reactions. So it plays a role in a lot of things. The biggest ones that we uh, need to focus on and understand are the role it plays in the blood pressure regulation and the renal uh, retention and excretion of water. The way that it does this is that sodium and water have a very direct relationship. Water follows salt. And that really has to do with this osmotic pressure, right? Salt Water wants to be with salt, okay? It wants to help uh, keep the balance of that osmotic pressure very equal uh, throughout the body, okay? So because of this, you know, a lot of our IV solutions are going to have sodium in them. Um, and it's just really important that we have our sodium balanced at this 135 to 145. We don't become too dilute. Another important thing to understand is the, the role that it plays in the stimulation of neuromuscular reactions. If our sodium gets too low, uh, we can risk our patients going into seizures um, and having neuromuscular side effects due to the sodium level. Okay, sodium also plays a role in our cell membrane with a sodium potassium pump. And by sodium and potassium work together to kind of regulate the flow of things into and out of the cell. All right, so some of the things that are going to cause increased sodium levels are Cushing syndrome, hyperaldosteronism, dehydration, burn injuries, lactic acidosis, fever, excessive sweating, um, excessive intake of, of fluids containing sodium, diabetes insipidus, and osmotic diuresis. Okay, so with osmotic diuresis, we're really just letting go of our fluids, retaining our electrolytes, and we're going to see the elevated sodium level due to that. Some things that are going to cause uh, decreased levels of sodium are going to be congestive heart failure, syndrome of, syndrome of inappropriate ADH, cystic fibrosis, diuretic use, metabolic acidosis, Addison's disease. So with a lot of these, you can kind of think of um, issues that are going to cause us to retain fluids. So hypervolemic states can lead to a decrease in sodium levels. So with CHF, we'll be retaining a lot of fluid. Syndrome of inappropriate ADH or SIADH, we're going to be retaining a lot of fluid. Um, and so these types of conditions are going to cause us to retain a lot of uh, sodium or cause our sodium levels to go down. Where on the opposite end, things that might cause us to lose fluid, hypovolemic states, are going to be things that are going to cause us to have increased sodium levels. Okay, so it's really important that we watch our sodium because of the role that it's going to play in um, regulation of anions and cations in the body through the sodium potassium pump, as well as neuromuscular reactions, and then also blood pressure regulation um, and the flow of fluid throughout our body, osmotic pressure regulation. All right, so that is sodium.